Hey everyone, this is Rob and Michelle and welcome to Boon Bape, your weekly podcast and everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. Meep. <laughs> so this week up on the docket, we actually just have a couple things to wrap up being Scurious, the Rap King, the <laughs> new rap boss for mid-level PPM. We're going to be uh, adding a few things to that and then also adding a few things to forestry. Yes. Uh, literally wrapping up forestry is what it's called so we'll be talking a little bit about that and actually some kind of significant changes to forestry yeah so that's a uh, kind of cool or kind of yeah. interesting at i least. think it's pretty interesting for sure yeah and then of course we're going to continue talking about leagues there's uh, honestly not a lot to talk about besides leagues obviously since it's still um i think just now the end of the week for leagues yeah we've um, still been leaguing all week yeah imagine jagex has just been doing fire control with leagues so that's what we have to talk about there's going to be a few fixes to go over and uh, some stuff like that for leagues and then of course before we get into all of that we'll go into our own updates yeah. i almost forgot about that because that's we do okay. have a lot of leagues ourselves to talk about we've still been playing a lot yes um should i just go into it is that great for the docket? And then we'll end with a Q and A. Q and A, as per usual. I and forgot. Feel free if you want to participate in the Q and A. Feel free to ask us any real life questions, like we have today, or in game questions, uh, or any other types of games besides RuneScape. Feel free to ask us over on Discord.gg slash Boonbape in the mm -hmm. questions section, or really just anywhere in our socials. Uh, you can find it down below on YouTube or just anywhere else. Yeah. But before we get into that exciting stuff, Michelle, how's it going? going well um leagues aside i did get one level on my main i got 93 fishing holy i do not know what to do for afking on my main i was killing abyssal fishing. demons i guess i was killing abyssal demons for a while and i made like 15 mil from whips but it's like a little bit too much having to pay attention like i because i have to look for drops you know so i've been doing like barbarian fishing or making um gold bars at the edgeville furnace i know that's not as much xp as blast furnace but it's more afk <clears throat> very torn what to do there but most of the time i have been playing on leagues i've been having so much fun so i am at let's see eleven thousand seven hundred points now i'm still i have up till tier six and i've chosen we chose the same huh yeah whoops um so i think last time i said how i chose banker's note i don't know if i got to it last week but i have chosen the melee route i've also chosen treasure seeker for clue scrolls and ruinous powers yep yeah i'm still like a 3300 points away from the next relic but i'm excited i don't know what i'm gonna choose but someone in my chat last night was really hyping up soul stealer so kind of leaning towards that and also uh, another disclaimer real quick. If you see us looking down in the video, it's because we are still both playing on mobile. We're both woodcutting. Yes. Yeah, the league's grind truly does not stop. <laughs> truly not. Truly yeah. not. But I've already gotten to um, TOA, so I'm really excited about that. I did Beneath Curse Sands this weekend. I died to the Champion of Scabarus, whatever, like twice and got my third KC. And man... I don't know if I actually know how to raid or if it's always just my gear that makes it so I can raid because like I mean you finished them. I did finish them, but holy moly, they are so long. They take so long to do solos or like with going people with less gear. We also did like some really quick yesterday, but um we were with someone who had a shadow. So Yeah. I mean your they gear were does suck. Mm -hmm. It does. Right I mean, now my melee gear is full obsidian. I got a glory though. I got my D longsword, a dragon defender. As of today, I have a ring of shadows and combat bracelet, but those are new. I also have spiked manacles and I got my fire cape. That's another thing I did. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, you're like technically doing like end game ish content with like gear that you could get within a week of like dedicated playing. Yeah. It's, um, it's like a lot though. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it's going to be difficult, but. It just takes so long to do stuff, which is unfortunate. It's still fun, but it's like, um, I just can't wait till I get a fang, really. Okay. I just want a fang, and then I need to go to Bandos. All I need is the best in slot one hander in the game. That's all I need. Yeah, I need fine. I'll take a Scython, whatever, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm just probably going to be sending a lot of TOAs trying to get that done. And I want to do a lot more tasks. Right now, my current goals 
When I'm streaming, I'm probably just going to be doing TOA. When I'm not streaming, I'm working on my Slayer because I want to get up to 85 so I can go and get Dragon Boots at level 83 and then get an Abyssal Whip at 85 if I don't get a Fang by then. Yeah. Those are the two big, big goals. I also need to go and do some more Soul Wars to get prayer. I got a million prayer XP from Soul Wars yesterday. It was great. Yep. It yeah. was really good. Robert highly, told me it's the way. I recommend it. Yeah, they have like special worlds, we heralds specifically for trying to like boost points and stuff and it's nice everyone kind of has like calls a truce except for the people griefing naturally there's always people griefing or they just don't know and are playing the game that's what i was thinking too because everyone's being mean like basically everyone agrees not to kill each other and just kill the avatars and um people would go and kill them they'd be like oh you effing moron and all this stuff and i was like well do they know are they griefing or are they just like there's no way to know they could have just joined the world they could have just joined the world and been like i'm gonna kill someone but um I definitely got killed by a griefer because we're at the end. You basically, there's like a little temple, what's called a statue in the middle. And you like take turns going back and forth, taking control of it. And I like went into the middle and someone who was just standing on the other side just walked up and killed me. And I was like, okay, nice. <laughs> like they'd have been doing it too. So that was cool. But um, I really love leaks. I think it's so much fun. Sometimes people have been making me overthink it by being like, what's the point? And I just remind myself that there doesn't have to be a point to everything. I could just do fun. What's the point of anything? Yeah, true. Like, what's the point of RuneScape in general? I don't want to give myself an existential crisis. It could just Uh, be for fun. Yeah, I was like, I mean, pretty much any game that isn't like an MMO-like is uh, pointless in that regard. Like, Mm -hmm. anyone that plays Counter-Strike or Valorant, like some of the most popular games in the world, you don't get anything for them. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's like the same like fast and phobia. What's the point? It's like to have fun. Yeah, you don't you don't get anything. So. I think it's just a lot of games like RuneScape, you have like collectibles. Which I mean with to be fair with leagues, you do. Like I'll have a trophy, it's just not gonna be my main. Yeah. Which is fine. I think if anything that will make me want to play more in my hardcore later because I'll be like, Oh, I wanna show off my trophy if I rank well. Yeah. And it's not like you're getting rid of the account. So Yeah, exactly. So I don't yeah, I'm still having fun with it. I don't plan on stopping. I've definitely gone less hard than I was going. Less, You started going less hard? I started, well, like, last week, we were, like, not doing anything. Now I'm finally starting to, like, edit more shorts and stuff. I put out a little video. It was both, basically, basically just, like, a VOD from last week. But I had to go through the entire video and, like, cut out any swearing from it. Yeah. But it was us doing, like, a uh, challenge mode speed run for a master achievement. So... I posted that and like made a thumbnail for it and stuff. I'm getting, I'm doing productive things again, you know, feeling better about that. Yeah. But yeah, um, I've been having so much fun. How are you? Um, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of the same. Uh, playing less, but also still playing a lot. Um, like uh, a little too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, I've been like not getting as much sleep. Like I think I got like five hours of sleep yesterday and today, so kind of feeling it a little bit, but. Besides that, I've been making a decent amount of gains, I guess, for my effort. I have the mm-hmm. same exact runes as you, so I'm not going to go over that. But I am at 12,950 points, so just under 2,000, or just over 2,000 away it. from the next rank. Uh, Michelle's, That's a lot more than me. Michelle's mad because, yeah, I'm slightly more than you. I haven't been tasking. I need to go task more. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, besides that, I think I got, uh, like, almost... No, we'll just say like 20 Slayer levels a day as well as like 20 combat levels today. Uh, like not total combat, but like yeah. all the all the different melees because I was doing a lot of Slayer at work. Um, yeah, he has similar goals with like the boots and the whip and stuff. Yeah. I think all meleers do really. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I already got a... It's nice because I just did a Gargoyles task before this and I was able to get the Granite Mall, which... Might be good for specking. I'm not sure. I think the dragon dagger might still be better, actually. Yeah. Uh, depending on what it is, probably. Because, I mean, I feel like the Gmall is really only good for PvP. I don't know. I mean, you could probably use it for your next gargoyle task. Eh, maybe. I don't know. The dragon long sword is actually pretty decent. Yeah, dragon long is really, really good. And then um, I also got the adamant boots. Or I think adamant boots. Yeah. So those those are actually a really big upgrade over the uh, mole slippers <laughs> I was wearing. Yeah. Uh, not aesthetically, obviously. The mole slippers are best in They slot. were his gear. People, uh, I guess, were complimenting him on it today. And he just, like, didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. Um, besides that, though, I did uh, make sure to, if you are melee, pick up. Actually, even if you're not melee, it is probably best in slot. Depending on what 
as long as you don't have the Fremnix unlock, you can get the Ring of Shadows if you have the Desert unlocked. Yeah, I just got that today. It's like a plus one, I think, for a lot of the things that are melee related. It's it's a plus, uh, I think, plus two for most things. I can't check because I don't know how to do it on mobile. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really good. I'd recommend getting it. It's best in slot for a lot of people as long as you don't have the Fremnic rings, of course. Yes. Uh, besides that, and it's only 80,000 GP, so it's actually mm -hmm. pretty cheap. Uh, besides that, though, I've been doing a lot of pretty much everything like yeah actually pretty much everything i did get like 10 combat levels like in like total combat levels i went from like 95 to one oh, the opposite of what you're just saying yeah i went from 95 to 109 so quite Holy. a few i'm up to 90 strength and almost 90 health oh my god yeah so a lot of slayer today pretty oh, cool tell me about your next task oh my next task is jad i got jad as a task so that's why I'm Spicy. actually just chopping trees right now, and then I'll do Jad after this, hopefully, mm -hmm. and uh, actually get the uh, cape. And then it's funny because as soon as I get the cape, I'm actually just gonna turn it into Inferno and then leave, because yeah, just a, just attempting the Inferno and giving them your fire cape is 200 points. I'm pretty sure. 200 for turning in, or the attempt, or both, like 400 total. I don't know what you're talking about because you can't really do one without the other. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you could turn it in but not attempt immediately, I thought. Like, unlock it. Because I think I did that. Huh. It doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway, Are you going to go uh, back to get another cape, though, later? Uh, Yeah, maybe. I don't really care, so we'll see. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really have too many goals besides, like, just still doing tasks because mm -hmm. that's cool. And then, like, getting stronger and then maybe eventually I'll raid. I'm not sure. That was the plan. You got to raid. Uh, yeah, I don't got to do anything because I'm just playing the game to have fun. But that is about it. We can probably move on. I don't really have like any other specific goals. I mean, I did like 50 clues yesterday. Just like a ton of clues. Treasure Hunter is so sick. I got I got a thousand points in like an hour yesterday. I was just like doing every single task I possibly could as fast as possible. Yeah, there's also a lot of um specifically clue scroll related tasks and collection log tasks. Because yeah. at first I was like, is there a point to the clues? But no, there's actually so many tasks related. And because we want to go to God War Dungeon eventually, we get a lot of yeah. God items. Yeah. I think I have at least one thing for every God now. So. Oh, I, yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, I'll be fine whenever I go there. <laughs> yep, so that's pretty cool. Um, But we can move on from leagues because, I mean, I don't want to talk about leagues forever. So we can talk about Scurious. <laughs> Moving on to the important things. A little rat king. Scurious, the Michelle king. All right. It's a mid-level PBM boss uh, like we talked about the other yeah, day. Yeah, we've spoken about him twice the past two weeks now. Yeah, it is a rat with rats on his back. So it's <laughs> ratception. Don't scroll down. I mean uh, the animation. Okay. Uh, anyways, though, there was some feedback regarding the weapons. Of course. Um, I mean, I guess it's good that they're getting feedback, but mm -hmm. of course. So if you're reading this, good news is that the rat bone weaponry has passed. So any budding adventurers looking to train their combat sets in a slightly more engaging way will be able to get their hands on rat spines and make some purpose-built rat slaying weapons. Oh my god, the um, spine is still gross. When the poll was live, there's actually a lot of back and forth between them making the weapons three tick versus four tick, which kind of doesn't make sense to me. The three tick. Um, Do you think it's too quick? Yeah, there's not many game or many items in the game that are three tick. What's like a whip? A whip's four. Oh, uh, three's really quick then. A, a, a skimmy is four and a... Skimmy? No. Say skimmy. Yeah, skimmy. I Skim say semi. Skimitar. Rune. <laughs> Skimitar. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. And uh, a blowpipe on rapid, I think, is two. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That was like kind of weirdly quick for a little rat weapon. Yeah. So kind of quick. Doesn't really. It actually make sense. would have been great for Tal, but the Nilo's like you choose a fast weapon. I use a ham joint. Yeah. It's kind of funny you say that because they said that a lot of places don't use uh three tick unless you're trying to kill a lot of Nilocas. Yeah. For example. But the thing is they want to train players to play the game and you're probably not going to be using a three tick for most of the game. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're probably just going to be camping the whip for like 95% of your life. That's in what melee. I did for sure. Um, besides that, though, or actually along with that, rather, they kind of went along with the same line of thinking. And because of that, they went made all of them four tick. Mm -hmm. um, all of the weapons, as far as I understand, are four tick, which is 2.4 seconds. Without trying to give too much away about the fight, there are several segments of the fight 
where you'll be able to bounce between hits with no attack delay. Interesting. Which is one of the mechanics we're using to deliver a good portion of the XP per hour. So apparently if you have quick hands and get used to weapon swapping, which is actually probably one of the uh, more core mechanics of the game, then uh, you can potentially get more XP. So it's kind of kind of rewarding. Okay. Uh, they also have a little gift <laughs> of what the rat potentially would look this like. This is why I told walking. him not to scroll because I wanted him to see it. Yeah, it's just a giant walking rat with rats on his back. And his belly's wobbling. Look at it. Okay. <laughs> you like him? <laughs> yeah. I want his pet. All right. This looks like a nasty animal. That's all we have to... That's all on the scariest. But yeah, um, yeah they it. made it four tick and there's a cool little animation if you want to check it out he's just walking he kind of looks like he's struggling to carry his little homies on his back but he's yeah. doing it he's so brave just little dudes yeah and one of them's wearing a hood i'm assuming he's a little major rat uh yeah probably <laughs> or he's just wearing a little hat the other one he wants is to. uh the other one has green eyes so yeah. he's the ranger rat. very range and then the main one it has red eyes so he's the melee rat yeah okay see it works yeah yeah I like the animation. I really hope that the pet is all three rather than just a single rat. It'll probably be a single rat, though. I hope it is just one rat three times. That'd be kind of cute. I'm just kidding. I don't, even, I don't even know what I mean by that. Just imagining three little triplets. But it's kind of like Cerberus, you know? Like, I got the hell puppy, and he only has one head. Yeah, that's weird. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's it for Scurrius. So hopefully the boss comes to the game and is in a good state. Yeah. Next up, we are going to be wrapping up Forestry. So they say that now the forestry is complete, we've decided to reevaluate the content as a whole and address some of your biggest bugbears because that's a normal thing to say. Well, uh, issues. Yeah. Biggest issues. I mean, a, a bugbear is a uh, an enemy. Okay. No one says bugbear though. No, I know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's a reference to the game or I forgot what game it's from, but bugbears is. An, an enemy in a video game. Oh, it's so like, they're making a reference. It's like The Witcher or something like that. Oh, I've never played that. Yeah, me really neither. <laughs> I just I just recall it from something. Okay. Shout out if you know what it is, because I don't think it's The Witcher, but I know it's from something. Yo, shout out to any uh, Stephen King fans, because the other day I had to kill Lipstrosities to get something to make like a pot for a quest. Mm, yeah. And I realized, I was like, Lipstrosities, this sounds so familiar. And I realized that that's the name of like a monster thing in the Dark Tower series. And I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Even on the wiki, it says it might be a reference. And I'm like, it's surely a reference. Surely. Surely. But anyway, back to forestry. For the most part, we feel that forestry has achieved its goal of making wood cutting more social and engaging experience. But we've heard your concerns and recognize that there's still a few changes we can make to ensure that it feels right. This is not forestry part three. This is just some small little changes happening, just so you guys know. Yeah, I mean, I don't they're even, not very small, but yeah, they are just changes. I don't even know what they have to specify that's not forestry part three, to be honest. I mean, probably because someone asked. Yeah, I don't know. I guess people just complain if they thought it was Forestry Part 3. But anyway, starting out with event items. This one is so weird. Uh, not in a bad way. Our intention with event items was to offer a way to make money through forestry. Other woodcutting resources aren't that valuable, so we're keen to find ways to slot in, into the wider economy of the game. Um, think like the things like the bee stick and like the padded spoon and stuff. Yeah, all Those the items, items that are supposed to spawn events. Yes, not like the normal items. So after reviewing your feedback, however, it's clear that many of you think the new items feel unnecessary. For a skill that used to be chop wood, get logs, the new items add a layer of unwanted complexity and make players feel as though they have to do a lot in preparation to train the skill efficiently. With that in mind, we are removing all forestry items from the game. Event items. Sorry. Event items from the game. All forestry <laughs> Everything's items Everything's gone. Ever. The pets too. No. Which means that when that happens, you'll only need your forestry kit and axe to participate in all the events. Free to play players will be unaffected by this change, but members will be able to participate in events a lot more easily. Nice. We also recognize that players have spent hard earned time and resources crafting these items and want to reward that. Any event items remaining with update launches will be converted to the gold equal value of the average price of the relevant item. I am extra excited that about this because of leagues. There's a few different tasks that you have to like participate in a certain event, and no one in leagues is buying these special items. Nope. So I hope that this happens during leagues so I can go and get my 40 points or whatever. Dude, I just got an elite clue bird nest. I got a beginner. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> Next is the event spawns. Yeah, so uh, now that the items have been removed, what happens to the events? Currently, forestry, uh, the forestry meta is to stick to one world and run around looking for events or wait until they're called out in a clan chat. That's kind of lame, but I can see why that is the best. XP. I don't do that, but yeah, no, I understand it. Yeah. I like just hang out in one place. 
however, this is just replicating the problem we were hoping to address. <laughs> the problem of woodcutting players all bunching up together in one spot instead of spreading around the world. Since we already tackled the world hopping meta, leaving this one alone seems like a misstep. Consequentially, we're going to change how events work to encourage uh, people to train in their favorite forest rather than feel like they have to jog halfway across Gilnor. Uh, to put it simply, the chance for an event to spawn near you is now based on the last two trees you chopped. We'll be tracking woodcutting activity over the last three minutes, which is about two trees worth of time. The tracking measures, measures chops, not logs, so don't panic if you haven't received a log for a while. It still counts towards the event spawn. So Thank this is God. pretty cool. This just makes it so if you're active, then it'll take that into account as far as um, tracking for uh, spawning events. I'm glad that they specified per chop because, like, I know in leagues, at least it's making me remember that you don't get much logs when you are early level. Yeah. Or, I mean, even later level because the magics take a long time. Magic takes so long, even when you're 99. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, they also go on to mention that each tree you've chopped lately will have a 20 tile radius in which an event can spawn that you're able to participate in. If you're eligible, you'll get the full amount of XP and bark and unique rolls. And an infused bark. So it's well worth sticking around to get the most out of your forestry training. If you're not eligible, for instance, if you just teleported to that world or if you just ran or across 21 the world, tiles away. Yeah, if you ran all the way from a different area to go to this event then you are not eligible and you'll be receiving only around 10 percent of the xp available so um and no uniques or anima infused bark from those yeah so just the xp this means that we preserved the fun of stumbling across an event in a wild in the wild while encouraging foresters to chop in their favorite spots rather than teleporting all over the place and completing an endless stream <laughs> of forestry events without much woodcutting occurring yeah so that's cool i mean they are incentivizing what they want to happen and disincentivizing stuff that they don't want to happen so i mean that kind of just makes sense mm -hmm. well, overall i mean I, I think it solves what they're looking to solve whether it, it doesn't affect me at all honestly um <laughs> you're not a forester no, I am a forester, but like I would just do events as they spawn. Oh, yeah, no, I did that too. Whenever I was doing it, I don't run around. I just stay in the same place. Yeah, I would just do events if they spawned, and then yeah. if they didn't, then I just wouldn't do them. I don't even really think about it. Yeah, so, so people go a little too sweaty on it. Yeah, so I think nothing is really going to change for me, but I'm glad that it's this way because this seems more appropriate. Like, I think running around is kind of just like, like a weird um, emerging gameplay. Yes. Like, it's it's just not... It's like shooting stars, too, you know, just like hopping all over the place, running around. I mean, yeah, I guess that one makes more sense. This just seems like extra, like even more weird, I guess. Because it could spawn anywhere. Yeah. Literally anywhere where a tree is. Yeah. So I guess it's good that they changed it. Uh, we're also making a couple of balancing changes to keep forestry events uh, feeling a bit more special. Firstly, we'll increase the time between the events. Sad. To balance this, we're making it a little more likely for, for uh, players to obtain uniques. And this should mean it isn't too much trickier to fill out your collection log. But just in case, we'll be keeping a close eye on drop rates. Cool. Moving on to Twitcher's Gloves. This was another area where players have been overwhelmed. The constant need to recharge your Twitcher's Gloves proved to be quite an annoyance. So we're overhauling how they work completely. Reminder that Twitcher's Gloves are the ones that give you a chance to get birdhouse when you wear them. But they had charges. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. They had uh 250 charges and it took about one out of 250 in order to get one bird's nest so yeah it gave it, you one every nest. single time that you chopped it would take away a charge yep so as of this update twitchers gloves will become a single item that doesn't require charges we're also doubling their bird nest buff to 20 percent. nice yeah that's actually pretty big yeah so in line of this upgrade we're also increasing their cost to 5,000 anim infused bark and 500 noted will locks that's good at least it's not like i hated it whenever they did like Oh, 100 of this log, 100 of this log, yeah. 100 of this they log. They still do it's that like, for other stuff. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, so it's nice that it's just 500. Now rolls. that I'm playing on like an iron, I understand how that's annoying. Yeah. On my main, I was like, whatever. <laughs> um, We will be removing older versions of the gloves, which means keen bird watchers will need to purchase some new ones from the forestry shop. You'll be refunded for any gloves you purchased previously to the tune of all the anima infused bark and will logs spent on every pair of unused gloves. So this change should hopefully make gloves feel like a better overall reward. Yep. And I agree. I think that that will actually make them seem way better. Because before I was like, why would I want these? Because you were pointing out that they're like not worth it. Someone did the math and it's just like so not worth. Yeah. And now potentially worth it. Yeah. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah. 
And now, uh, especially since it doesn't degrade or anything, that's should, huge. Should huge just kind of be a no brainer if you actually do forestry to get them. Mm -hmm. Um, lastly, we have Arctic pines, uh, Arctic pine trees, rather. Uh, this change is comparatively pretty minor, but um, <laughs> it's something you've asked for since forestry first launched. Essentially, some rewards require Arctic pine logs. No one knows why, but they do. But not every account type can obtain them. As you know, our general feelings is that restricted accounts are restricted for a reason and you should stay restricted. But Arctic pine logs aren't exactly a precious resource that need to be locked behind a quest. Especially since you don't even unlock them from the quest. In the Yeah, they in, just happen to be there. Yeah, exactly. In the interest of fairness, we've sent our best gardeners into the wilds of Relica, where they've successfully planted a new grove of Arctic pines. Aww. Now everyone can appreciate their beauty, then immediately chop them down for firewood. Don't worry. We're sure they'll grow back. Supposedly. Yeah, so that's um that's it. They just added Arctic pines to Relica, which I think is exactly what I said they should do. Yeah, I mean, it seems obvious. I was all like, oh, the hunter area right above it seems like a perfect area to have. Yeah, I wonder where pines. exactly it'll be. That'd be kind of cute if it's over there. Yeah. Like snowy. Because, I mean, that's where the hunter area is. So, yeah. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, like the forestry area with all the uh, animals would have Arctic pines. But I don't think they're usually in a snowy area. Arctic pines? Arctic's in the name, isn't it? I might be thinking of a different tree. You're like, usually that's, uh, usually they actually tend to be around Karamja jungle. I think I'm thinking of a different tree. Yeah, hopefully. But uh, anyways, that's it. So not a ton going on for woodcutting or actually anything besides leagues. Like we said, there's really just some stuff here and there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of leagues, we have a bunch of changes for leagues that's going to be coming out this week. Yeah. So the changes this week are not going to be coming out on Wednesday like normal. They're going to be coming out thursday um that probably like this that should is be out thanksgiving day that is thanksgiving day if you were in the u.s um but that should be after this episode comes out so just heads up we're gonna be out of town so we're actually recording this on tuesday and wednesday so we're just gonna have to talk about everything ahead of time yes <laughs> so since this blog has come out there's actually been a couple updates mm -hmm. for uh certain, hot certain fixes. yeah hot fixes for certain uh drop tables because a lot of them actually were bugged slash what? not working in my game yeah so <laughs> this actually is really nice so apparently uh muspa as well as the revenants were fixed because uh apparently a lot of the drop rates for the weapons upgrades specifically were really busted that's frustrating uh, this also encapsulates things like the gout tuber someone mentioned that last night i actually ended up getting the gout tuber and doing like that diary and someone was like aren't that xp or like isn't it like really rare and i was like wait what uh it's probably because it was fixed so this was fixed on the 21st yeah so i got it pretty quick yeah and then uh the void week waker pieces uh shade scrolls zealot outfit and the holy elixir are um now correctly dropping so nice whether they were too much or too little now they're too now they should be fixed now they're too perfect yes yeah so that is uh, pretty much it. I mean, there were additional changes or hot fixes, but uh, th those were the newest ones. So those yeah, are those really are all you need to worry about. The new fun ones. Yeah. So if you have been grinding things like the Void Waker, then hopefully now you will actually be able to get it. And uh, also, like we mentioned, this game update for this week is going to be on Thursday, the 23rd. So it's going to be on Turkey Day for all of you uh, people in the United States. Yeah. And uh, it'll just be a Thursday for everyone else. And um, so, also, this is coming out before the update. So yes. we, if there's any additional things, you'll hear about next week from us. Yeah, exactly. So we are still, this is still Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyways, and I'm though, still playing leagues, so don't mind me if you're on YouTube. And I, I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm just trying to find my way to trees. Yeah, I care about you guys, so I'm actually paying attention. Okay. <laughs> anyways. Anyways. So they say to say that Trailblazer Reloaded has exceeded our expectations would be the understatement of the century. I don't know. Century's kind of a kind of a lot. Uh, I mean, it got like I think world records for live players in OSRS. Yeah, which I mean is they say world record like yeah, dramatically. World record. It, game it's just, record. Yeah, it's just a record <laughs> for the game. Uh, I think it was a little over two hundred thousand players. The most people to ever play any game in the world. It was the most players in the game since. Uh, old school RuneScape was getting petitioned to have become its own game. That's crazy. Wow. How cool. Um, anyways, people to... love leagues. I don't know why it took them so long. Yeah. No one knows. <laughs> uh, literally 
why do they not have it every year? No one knows. Hopefully they will now. To paraphrase another trailblazer, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. I'm pretty sure Uncle Ben said that. I was going to make a joke and be like, oh, didn't Jeffrey Dahmer say that? No, the guy on the rice, Uncle Ben. On the rice? Yeah. Who's, what? Uncle Ben's rice. What is that? All right. What is this a reference to? Uh, with that in mind, we oh, like to. Oh, is that like Karate Kid or something? Wait, is it not Karate Kid? I don't know what that is. Uncle Ben's Yeah, you actually rice. got it right. It was Karate You're Kid. You're messing with me. That's Mr. Wiyagi or something. Yeah, Mr. Wiyagi on Uncle Ben's rice. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, that's. Yeah, totally. Whenever you said Ben, I thought you shout ben out to uh, everyone that knows Uncle Wiyagi's Ben's rice. Uh, with that in mind, <laughs> we'd like to give you all a quick update on outstanding issues that we're working on fi- or are working for fixes. Um, so essentially, all the hot fixes that I just mentioned, they were saying that they're working on them, but now they are fixed. They're done zones. There are more fixes, but those I think were the main ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, upcoming changes, working to fix as many as possible this yeah. week because they these ones still have not been fixed. All the uh, ones that I mentioned earlier were hot fixed already, so these are additional things that they know are busted Should that be still fixed need to get fixed. Day after this comes out, or day that it comes out, actually. Yeah, hopefully. So players receive emote clues for steps requiring items that aren't obtainable in their region. That, so, we talked about that last week, I think. Both of us were getting that. It's annoying. Yeah. Also, the next one is receive a magic seed from a bird's nest. Well, those are going to be properly. fixed. I don't know. Did you say that's going to be fixed? I think I said these or are going to be fixed, like, They're a all th- fixed. Th- like a thousand times. Well, a thousand. And then okay. you even emphasized it'll be on Thursday. Just read. <laughs> <laughs> don't You're talk like, to me. Actually, don't... I just uh, forgot the last... You know, one whole minute of my life. I'm still wondering what the Ben's rice thing is. Yeah. It's, uh oh, the Ben's rice. The Mercedes Ben's rice. They came out the rice series. <laughs> rice. <laughs> Just a little grain of rice. Right. I mean, that's <laughs> why they call certain cars ricers. Uh, There's no way that's real. Yeah. Who knows? Players who select the farmer's fortune. This is real. <laughs> Players who, select, <laughs> players who select the Farmer's Fortune Relic cannot complete certain tasks for things like resurrecting crops and protecting crops because, well, your crops never die. And so. they are ready immediately. Yes. So there's uh, no way to complete those. So they are going to be auto-completed, I think, is what they yeah, decided. Yeah, you have to attempt to perform the action and then it will do it. Yes. So you don't have to try. But this is, of course, after the fix. Mm-hmm. Uh, players obtaining pets from Tomb of a Masket and DT2 aren't receiving completion, so now they should. And this will also complete retroactively, so you will not need to get the pet again. Yeah. Uh, colossal... One boss pet's enough. Exactly, because they are normal rate. They're not boosted rates. Uh, colossal Hydras aren't providing Slayer points to players with the Bloodthirsty Relic when killed. Um, yeah, that is not good. That's so, annoying. Yeah, hopefully you'll get your actual Slayer points now. Bloodthirsty feels pretty underwhelming in some regions. We're looking to add some low-level superiors because their bloodthirsty does help your blood, uh, your superior your blood, rate, your, your superior spawn rate. So hopefully that'll be nice. Also, they were talking about adding some lower-level superiors because obviously you can only get them for enemies like blood velds and stuff like that, which are typically pretty high combat and um, yeah. Stuff we're like that, we're so. talking about this the other day, actually, off stream about how, like, even in different regions, like, some places don't have as many, like, Slayer dungeons that have bosses that even spawn superiors. Yeah. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, kind of annoying. Uh, they also added a toggle to the Infernal Gatherer for instances where players want to keep more resources. I actually thought of this the first time I saw it. I'm like, okay, so if you just want logs in order to fletch them, you actually cannot get them once you get this relic. So Wait, um, why does it bank it? No, it auto burns it. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. No fletching ever again. <laughs> uh, also, the pyramid plunder kill count tasks do not update correctly. No, hopefully they should. Enchanted bolt. And retroactively as well. Oh, yeah. And retroactively. That's pretty big. Uh, Enchanted bolt special effects don't apply healing via the soul stealer relic. Um, <laughs> and this is, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they said, is this getting fixed or is this just, list- it's listed as it's just a statement. So I'm assuming that is going to get fixed because yeah. it's on the list with uh, other bugs. I wonder how that'll interact with uh, Ruby Bolts. Yeah. Like, will you just get, you know, a-, a ton of health back? True. Actually, it doesn't specify. So I wonder if they're just like telling us like this does not work yeah. and it does not Because it, it literally us. just says Enchanted oh. Bolts don't apply healing effects with yeah. Soul Stealer, period. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I think they could have been a little clearer. Either way, I'm sure we'll find out on Thursday. Yes. 
Um, also, Ghost of Hoya is auto completed with the from me unlock, but don't but doesn't complete the corresponding task. So now it should. Mm -hmm. uh, Client of Corind is auto completed with from me unlock as well, but again doesn't complete the task. Gmall special attack aren't hitting as intended. I didn't notice. I have a Gmall, but I didn't notice. I only used it once on a, on a gargoyle. So I was gonna say you have a Gmall, right? Yeah, I have two of them. Not not really uh, too much practice with it, but it seemed Apparently, fine when I used it. Apparently, you are gonna get stronger. Hopefully, or worse. It says not as intended. Who knows? It doesn't say. Yeah, you just get worse. <laughs> uh, Trailblazer tools are weaker than intended on the path of Het inside <laughs> Tombs of a Masket. So okay. hopefully they're stronger now. The task for completing Elemental Workshop will be removed since the task is auto-completed during the League's tutorial. Uh, good. Uh, and lastly, Solicept Mushroom Caps were very rare for some reason. I saw some people giving the tip that if you went to the guide on Fossil Island, you can turn off the fossil drops via him, and that would increase your drop rate of the cap from the mushrooms. So maybe you don't need to do that now because yeah, hopefully you it's said that fixed. you went really rare or really dry. No, no, no. I I did like thirty minutes of it or twenty minutes of it and didn't get it. Okay. So I was like, all right, this isn't worth it, and just moved on. Oh, I also have a random life hack. If you were going for gout tubers, that someone told me the chance of getting a gout tuber is whenever little events spawn. So go to the dense jungle next to the hut, like next to the teaks and mahoganies, because you'll do a worse job and get more events spawning. Okay, there you go. Just so you know. Hacks, life hacks. Life hacks. Yeah, but that is all of the changes. Um, is there anything else that we need to cover? Not really. It's just kind of talking about what leaks is in general. Yeah, so this is all of this stuff, if you want the uh to see the update as well, is just part of the Trailblazer Reloaded post that they posted mm -hmm. earlier this week. So they are just adding to it. Yeah. So I'm guessing they'll continue to update this whenever more stuff gets fixed, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is pretty much it. After that, I have a couple more updates that I wanted to say. Wow. Yeah. Oh, also, I... uh, sorry to cut you off. No, it's okay. But talking about the pets earlier reminded me that I, uh, we forgot to mention that I got a pet. Oh, yeah. Tell them how early you got that. Oh, yeah. At like 40, like around 45 thieving, I got Rocky <laughs> doing, uh, I was I was squirking naturally. Yeah, he was, he's always squirking. You yeah. Know? He, I literally thought he was lying. He's like, I got a pet. And I came over and you can't see it when he's in Sorcerer's Garden. So I was like, no, there's no pet here. And then he left and it was there. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I got a little rock following it's me. It's cute because you can't use the orb teleporter thing while you have a follower. You, so have, you have to, to like, pick him up. Yeah, you have to pick him up and like cuddle your little baby probably. Yeah. We're assuming that's happening. Every time he did it, he was like, I got to pick up my little Rocky. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You have the red panda, right? Yeah, I turned him into a panda. He's so cute. It's adorable. Yeah, you pretty cool. You got skilling pets. Uh, let's On your down. GIM, you got an agility pet, like 30. Yeah, that's true. But that's, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty common. You know? It's pretty easy. It's not, but I mean, okay. Everyone has skilling pets, right? I only have one. It took me to like 90 something. I still spin though. Okay, that's cool. Um, but what's your update? Oh yeah, I um got my first purple last night in TOA. Yeah. Yeah, we did you like got the a shadow, right? No, I don't even want a shadow in leagues actually. Oh. We did like a two hundred thing. I got a ring, but the light bear. Yeah, I got the light bear, which is fine. I mean, I just updated. I just what's it upgraded to the ring of shadows, like you said. Yeah. But I've switched to light bear for um, rage just because the special attack is pretty nice. It doesn't it have as good combat, but special is pretty good. So I'm excited about that. I really want a fang though. Like desperately want a fang. I've never wanted a fang so bad. But um, Oh, okay. Hopefully I get that. We'll see. And also I was doing a lot of tasks last night on stream. Because I'm not going to stream again until like Sunday. So I streamed like an hour later. And I'm now at 13,360 points. So only 1640 till my next relic. Nice. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually right about where I am as well. Um, surpassed you. <laughs> well, my update is I might not be playing leagues anymore because I want to start focusing on uh on uh this networking. PCNA. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if I'll play leagues or video games anymore. We'll see. Yeah, he got burnt out suddenly. Not really. I just have priorities. I have, I made like shorts today. That guy next to you, his priority was getting the infernal cave. Yeah, God, we are a weekend. He's cutting trees. He is. He's cutting this mahogany. Is it mahogany? Yeah. I didn't know there was mahogany's on soil, mm, soil aisle. I've been cutting teaks. Why are you cutting teaks? Because I didn't know there was a mahogany. Are you 60? I'm like 70. I'm 76. 
Why aren't you cutting magics? That's 75. Oh my god. Well, first I need to cut some mahoganies because I'll use them for birdhouses later. Okay. I didn't know that there was a mahogany here. Why are you... Okay. Either way. We're not um, going to argue right now. Yeah, make sure to look up how to woodcut before you do it. Big hey. tip. Big tips. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll still play sometimes, hopefully. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, But we can move on. I do like how... We, I like how much they switch, like, because this is... This is definitely a shorter episode because there's not as much and like we have to go, we're leaving them in the night so we have to go to sleep soon. Yeah. But um, at the beginning of the episode you're like yeah super into leagues. Twenty minutes later you're like all right I'm kind of over leagues. Yeah. Well you know things change. Fair. Life changes. But yes. But uh, we can move on to questions. Right? Yeah. Q and A time. Yeah. So um, who is asking the questions and also uh. Feel free again to ask us questions over on the Discord. That is the best place, but actually, really anywhere you can even drop into the mm -hmm. stream and ask there. Do you want to know how to say the questions in Dutch? No, but you can tell me. De vragen. Okay, naturally, that's a word. <laughs> Literally Dutch. <laughs> it is such a weird language. Nice. All right, our first question is from Ivor on Disc. Um, I'm gonna cut out some parts of this because Ivor goes crazy. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, do you think OSRS needs more hybrid skill training methods? I think they make a lot of sense since most real activities require multiple areas of expertise at once. Would you propose if so? Some activities could use several skills at once. I think a hybrid cooking, construction, fire making, slayer hybrid would be super fun, in which you cook a particular food your prey really likes, build a small, attractive looking structure using planks, and bait it using the food. And then this is where Ivor goes off the rail and talks about burning them to the ground. But anyway, then you get a big XP drop and find some new victims. You can't okay. just be a regular hunter. It has to be victims. Yeah, of course. Uh, you could even consider this for thieving, depending on your point of view. And gnome fire lighters could have a whole new meaning. Another possibility. Yeah. Uh, the fairy mafia has decided to hire you out as a hit person in a new hybrid slayer hunter method in which you receive hit tests, requiring you to go into the world and talk to NPCs to learn about the recent whereabouts of your assigned certain troublemaker until you gain enough information to close it on your target and then skip in a little bit because it gets violent. And then you get a, you kill them and get a hefty XP reward with a chance of unique drops, while over time you accrue a mobster reputation, which imparts fear-based discounts from shops and services across Gilnor. Okay. I was kind of intrigued in both these ideas until you like took it off the rails, you know? Yeah. I was like, oh, it sounds like a cool little hunter. Hit person, like, low-key makes sense because they have a little mobster thing going on. Yeah. And then you get you you get really intense, Ivor. You really do. Yeah. Um, before we say our thoughts, real quick, Hariger also had um some feedback feedback. Feedback. <laughs> some feedback. That's the that. musical version of feedback. <laughs> Please. Um, Hariger said, Your general concept's quite cool. I think you're proposed to Jagex, you might have to tone down the details. So let me build on this a bit. Hariger suggested fire making and farming, burning fire making patches, fire, yeah, fire making patches to prepare the patch for more successful and fruitful harvests, also reducing disease risk. Cause that's a thing, right? Like burning stuff to make it like more fertile or whatever. Not for farming. What's it for? Uh, that's to prevent fires. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, strength and range allow players to have higher accuracy when holding heavier bows and crossbows and shooting farther. Agility and magic allow agility shortcuts where one can levitate for short periods. Fire making a range, fire arrows, and construction and defense. Ability to set up standing shields in PvP areas with a small hole through which you can cast spells or shoot arrows but be protected from one side from range attack. It's destroyed when a player attacks it with melee. Um, yeah, so what do you what do you think of in general, like putting these together of these specific ideas and what is some ideas that you could think of? um i generally think it's a pretty okay idea okay um i like it because it does add some potential diversity into different training methods yeah i mean because we have the barbarian fishing you get strength while fishing yeah i think that's honestly, the only one i can think of right now i think the best example is drift net fishing okay it's agility um, and fishing right nope it's hunter and fishing hunter okay yeah. weird and it's actually pretty good xp rates of both yeah i haven't been there in a long time uh yeah so i mean i think it's generally a good idea my main concern was is mainly that the content would just be dead on arrival mm -hmm. because like you know they wouldn't give it the best xp it rate. Would, yeah of course it would have to be like not good xp rates in comparison but drift net fishing is actually pretty good because it's decent fishing xp and decent uh hunter xp 
in kind of an area of both of those that that it's like not easy or fun to get XP other mm-hmm. than, you know, the most optimal traditional methods. Um so especially for hunter. Yeah. Because yeah, hunter early on is kind of lame. It's two birdhouses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think if you can fill certain niche spots, that would be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But I think it's really easy for it to come out and just be like, who's going to use this? Or yeah. it's going to only be an extremely high level content. I would say if it was going to be a thing, it would either have to be high level, which I don't think they do because they don't really introduce high level content like that, really, for skilling, it feels like. Yeah, maybe. Um, Or good XP, which, again, I don't think that they do because people are really weird whenever new XP things come out. And the other one that I think they could do is if it was like slightly AFK for less XP because people like having stuff that's more AFK and you'd be trained two skills. I guess so. Yeah. Um, As far as like combos, I think it's uh, some really like easy and obvious combos for me that kind of don't already exist is like crafting plus X. So, I mean, crafting plus like blacksmithing, Mm -hmm. uh, crafting plus construction. Um, stuff like that. Sure, you could even just do like house decorations for crafting and construction. Yeah, I think one that could use. I think that's an easy answer, but it doesn't really need it. I think one that might benefit most from it would be like mining. Like mm-hmm. you could do like mining plus strength. Oh, true. Like doing like big boulders or something. Yeah, something like that. Put or... some agility in there. You're mining down, and then you have to hop over something and do more. Yeah, or something <laughs> that would also be a really good combo is mining plus room crafting. Um, oh. Yeah, so I think there's yeah. really good ways to incorporate this into the game, and I I like the idea mm-hmm. of it because I mean, there are definitely like points in leveling all skills where it gets kind of boring and or there's only really been one method for a long time yeah so if there's another option during that specific period like maybe you're like oh you need 55 mining in order to do this and you also need like 15 rune crafting yeah then I mean, obviously, if you're just going to do fires, you're going to if you're just going to do lava runes or whatever, then you're going to do lava runes, whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, like early rune crafting is kind of boring it's awful. and lame until you get to like, I guess, like cosmics and laws and bloods. For me, it was bad until bloods. Yeah. But like so if you can have like an early rune crafting requirement as well as a requirement for mining, that's like 55 or 60 when you're either going to be power mining or doing weather load mine or waiting until amethyst mm-hmm. well now shooting stars are viable yeah i guess you could do shooting stars but all of those are really slow afk methods yes. so it's like this could be a good in, in in between from pyre mining or granite i guess i agree so yeah, i was i think like filling in those voids i was thinking like wood cutting and hunter even though we don't really need more wood king because of forestry it's just the best i could think of but something like maybe on false island because there's already so many different little hunting things there it's kind of fun Maybe, like, chopping down, um, like, the mushrooms or something to, like, get a certain hunter creature out from them. Like, if you successfully cut it down. Okay. I don't know. I'm not very creative. (laughs) (laughs) That's the best I could do. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Our next question is from Harger. Thank you. Scroll for me. Yeah. Oh, actually, these are in real life ones, so I'll get back to those. Our next RuneScape question is from Matt on Discord. So, a couple of PvP-related questions. Nice. We'll discuss one at a time. So the first, would you quit if OSR has turned every world permanently into a PvP world where only banks and other current PvP world safe areas apply and everywhere else is a killing zone? I would quit. Like, I think that might be um, one of the only things that would make me quit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's just like a no completely different game. Exactly. Um, I don't know. Like, it depends because there are games like that. Like, for instance, Black Desert. Mm-hmm. technically you can pvp pretty much anywhere as long as a person is above a certain level which is how runescape is essentially mm-hmm. and uh it's actually not that big of a problem unless you go to like really popular areas then someone might be like all right you're annoying and then just like try to kill you yeah. or obviously people just like doing that then they might try to kill you anyways but there is a system to prevent you to just randomly killing everyone you see because it is fairly disincentivized 
unless the other person also wants to fight back. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think if they added something like that, like a karma system, um, because like obviously if you're just gonna go mining you don't like really want to be harassed yeah but like if there's only like five rune ores then chances are you you're will gonna get be PK'd everywhere so there's needs to be some incentive or disincentive in place for one of the parties so i could see it working like i said black desert is one of the top 10 most popular mmos so it's not like it doesn't work obviously but would it work for runescape though uh potentially like i said yeah it, it could i could see it working it just would be um difficult i don't know if i would quit i mean probably but probably. i don't know i don't know if i would <laughs> yeah it'd be tough our second question from matt what would your reaction be if osrs turned only sailing zones into a pvp environment for the first month that each new area is released kind of makes sense because when humans began to sail centuries ago they slaughtered natives and each other as they rushed to conquer new land I am not totally opposed to that. I mean, I don't like it, to be clear. I don't like yeah. it. But if they introduced it, I would say that makes sense for a different reason. And just that it's new content. So they want it to be like kind of crazy is how I was thinking of it. Because okay. it reminds me of whenever DT2 came out and they didn't upload the quest on a quest helper. Just because like they want stuff to be more challenging when it first comes out. So it reminded me of that a little bit. Yeah. But I would not be a fan. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of interesting. Um, I could see, I could see it being cool if they added wilderness type areas. Mm -hmm. I I don't really like Not time everywhere. gated things in general, especially like for the first month when they'd be the most popular. Because mm -hmm. then it's like. You know what's preventing clans from doing stuff, or you know, True. can just low level players not play? Like, um. I don't know. There's told. There's tons of stuff to think about, but I think having like a pirate system in certain areas, like maybe there, there's like rev, like they mentioned a rev cave island. Like if that is in the pirate area, that would make sense and kind of be obvious, actually. But not everywhere. No, not everywhere, and not time limited. I think it's like, oh, do you want this cool stuff to happen? Loot. Maybe you can even take stuff from other players. I don't know, okay. but um. But piracy themed, that really? Would, yeah, that would be like a pirate area. That'd be cool. Yeah. But uh, definitely not... Not quite like this. I, I wouldn't like this initial proposal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we also have some in real life questions from Hariger. So one for Robert, one for me. For Robert, what is your favorite gym exercise? Mine is dumbbell bench press because I like the larger range of motion, being able to go to failure without any worries. Yeah. What's yours? Uh, it's funny. I actually thought about this question for many hours over a few days. Really? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, okay. one, that's cool. I also like the dumbbell bench press. I specifically <laughs> do the incline dumbbell bench press almost every week. Um, that being said, I will never go very heavy on it because, um, I've actually seen people get injured doing it. Oh, Yikes. Okay. Um, Be careful. Hard. Obviously, this is more diff more if you're doing like a a higher a higher weight for yourself, obviously, relatively. Yeah. Because um it's actually really easy when the weight is like, for instance, if especially this can happen if you're laying on a flat bench, is if the weight comes down, then your arm is actually at a really vulnerable position because your hand is behind you Oh. Um, okay. while you're laying down. So if like, let's say you have 80 pounds, your body's not used to having carrying 80 pounds below your back. Mm -hmm. So it's actually um, fairly common to have like a uh, rotator cuff injuries because of that. Is that why people always have spotters? Um, no. Not oh. usually. That's usually <laughs> just so you can get more reps. There's no real spotting necessarily in dumbbell exercises. You kind of just drop the weight. Oh, they do also, it on that, TV. That being said, even if you drop the weight, I've seen people um, hit their feet when <gasps> they drop the weight. <gasps> and um, yeah, so there's, oh my God. there's definitely a few ways I've seen people injure themselves doing this exercise. That's why I won't go to failure on it. Um, Is failure when it goes back like you were saying? No, failure is just when you fail your oh. body fails oh you just keep going until you can't do it anymore yeah exactly oh okay so yeah that's mainly why i won't go to failure i do really enjoy them that being said 
my favorite exercise. I actually thought about this and I have a favorite exercise, a favorite uh day of exercise and like a favorite body part to exercise. Ooh, okay. So I my, have answers for this too, by the way, even though you didn't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite exercise ever, probably forever, is the squat. Uh, just <laughs> you do be squatting. Squatting and squirking all day. It is, yeah, exactly. Uh, I usually squirk while I squat. Jesus. <laughs> Are you okay? Um, so it's just because it's, one, I feel the best after I'm done. And... Also, it is the most functional of any of the movements. Yeah. Like, how many times are you pushing something off your chest via bench press? You know, how many times are you picking stuff up off the ground in a bar form? <laughs> you know, probably never, actually. But you be squatting every day. Exactly. You squat to get up out of a chair, you know, several, maybe hundreds of times a day, depending on what your job is. You squat to dance. Uh, Yeah. Just work. Everything. And most people, when they're older, want to be able to do just one thing, and that is to squat to get up and into their chair. Oh my God, I need to do more squats in preparation for that. Yeah, so it is the most functional movement. Also, it works your entire body. It's a compound movement. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to like uh, squatting. And um, my favorite day of exercise, though, is back day. Just because, like you Random. said, I can go to failure. It's actually very hard for me to go to failure on my back because, like, your back has... Um, the majority of like muscles in your body, like mm -hmm. small ones, number wise, obviously not bigness wise, but um, yeah, there's like, uh, I think like over near or over a hundred muscles in your back. Like there's just like a ton of muscles. Jeez. So it's actually really tough to um, tax all of them. So because of that, I kind of can just like, if push I push yourself a lot. Yeah. Like I can, you can really just do like, seemingly infinite amounts of reps and eventually you will get tired but it's like it's nice because if if like i'm mad or something <laughs> um i can really like zone out and just like become one with like the pain in a back day yeah whereas like i have to worry about dying on chest day if i do that with like a bench or something or uh you know shout out rest in peace uh someone actually died squatting not too long ago how with a I don't know. Do he we was, want to say he was squatting a lot of weight and things did not go right? Mm, that's so scary. Yeah. Rest in peace. Be um, careful. I think his name was also Robert. So unfortunate. Mm. But yeah, so that's why I like back day. You can't really hurt yourself unless you're doing deadlifts, which I don't do anymore. So it's impossible to really hurt yourself while rowing, I guess, unless you like tear a bicep. So that's really nice. Um, and as far as my favorite like movement day of the week to oh. squat. It would be on the weekends because then you can spend several hours working out, which is not a luxury I can afford. Dang. So you said not on the weekends you could rest after. On the weekends you could go harder. Yeah. Well, I'm used to being able to work out for several hours at a time. Now I only have like 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's kind of like usually my heart rate is way higher than I want, to, want it to be just because... I have to work out for the entire 30 minutes straight with, mm -hmm. like, practically no rest. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I like working on the weekends. Interesting. I didn't actually know that myself. Yep. Favorite motion? Or is that squats? You said that was a thing, right? Yeah, squats. Oh, okay. Never mind. Can, can I answer? Yeah, of course. My favorite workout is leg presses. They're yeah. They're fun. Okay. They're satisfying. And the other day, I was leg pressing using Robert as a weight low key. He, like, leaned on me, and I was like, wait, I feel like I could do a leg press. <laughs> that and, sounds really suggestive. And no, it actually wasn't suggested. Like, uh, he was just, he was just, like, pretended to follow me or something. And I was like, wait, let me try this. It's not suggestive, I swear to God. Yeah, I was like, I swear out of context, to God. this sounds very suggestive. It really suggestive. wasn't. Like, but it actually was, like, kind of cool. Like, I haven't been to a gym in a long time, and I always thought leg presses were so much fun. So I was like, this is cool. And I do this thing, you mentioned heart rates. Whenever I think. <laughs> she does this for everything, not workout related as well. When I'm scared, <laughs> whenever something like I'm out of breath or something, I like to just feel my pulse just because, and I'm like, wow, it's going fast. I don't count it. I'm just like, wow, that's fast. Yeah. So, um, my pulse was pretty quick when I was doing that. You know, it was pretty crazy. Huge. But I just think they're so fun, and also my legs are stronger than my arms, so it always felt very satisfying because I was able to do more weight. Nice. And it feels it makes me feel strong. 
And my favorite day is leg day because I feel like you're the most sore after in like a satisfying way. Yeah. Because like, I don't know. I probably honestly wasn't great at doing chest and back, but um, legs, I could always feel like a super, super sore. And the other ones were just like sore, but not too bad. So I think it's cool. Yeah. 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 I just, I like those. That's cool. Also on a final note, uh, just about going to failure. I do go to failure, but I usually do it on machines. Like, uh, any of the hammer strength machines where you load the plates onto the machine. The hammer, the one where you like go. It's no, it's a brand. Oh. Yeah. So like <laughs> any of the machines, any of the machines where you add plates. Yes. Those I'll go to failure because like it's really there's really no downside to going to failure unless you like just injure yourself, right? <laughs> but um. You die. Yeah. Exactly. So. That's usually when I will utilize that. Also, I like machines way more than working out standard, which sucks because I don't go to the gym anymore because, like, saving money and stuff. But it's sometimes I'll just, like, do squats and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I miss the machines. They're so much more fun. Okay. I never went to the gym until, like, uh, we got together, so I never – I didn't have, like, past experience with them. So I was just like, this is cool, and I just be doing all these things, feeling cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's good. Our final in real life question from Harger. Um, ask me, how do you get a perfectly black background for your videos and still limit yourself so well? How much does that setup cost? So we use a Couple green bucks, screen. About three fifty. Was the green screen three fifty? No, that's a joke. Oh, um, okay. How much was the green screen? I don't know, like a couple hundred bucks. Okay. Well, we have a green screen and it's like it's like a roller thing. Like it rolls up and down. Yeah. It yeah. Is. It's very intrusive. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could easily get the a similar setup for probably like a hundred bucks. You just need a green sheet mm -hmm. paper or cloth and then hang it up behind you. Yeah. Ours has like little like things in the back to keep it straight. Yeah. So, the, the 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 like, like a pull pulley. Up, yeah. The the pulley pull up like method it like goes down it's contractible mm -hmm. so you can retract it or contract it or retract it yeah i like and, it for uh, that reason it's very minimal yeah, like it's, setting it's, up and ending streams yeah it's fast it's self-contained and it's an elgato uh mm -hmm. screen so you can just buy it or check out their website i've had it for a few years and it still like works really well yeah i'd yeah. recommend it um so i use that and on obs you're able to add like filters and like filter out the color green yeah, so sometimes a chroma key effect yeah sometimes depending on the color shirt i'm wearing my shirt will just start like fading into the background of runescape yeah i used to just wear green sweaters because i didn't care and it was goofy yeah. but that was before i had a better light so my light is just a random amazon one i think uh yeah so this is just a it's 50 dollars. yeah it's about 50 bucks um it's it's actually yeah i think it's about 30 or 40 for the light and then 15 for the, the power arm. the power cable that comes with it oh and then yeah the arm i think is the arm is actually an elgato arm so i used to have the elgato key light but i was having issues with it and yeah i got sent a refurbished one that had the same issue and i was just over it so i just switched this because the elgato one's like 150 yeah the elgato lights are a smart light but it's honestly it's a real uh it it's a lot better going with the dumb light i have like this steam deck too and you used to be able to like turn your light on and off using the steam deck and it kept disconnecting because mine was having issues but i will say that the elgato light is softer like in a better way yeah i don't know how to well, describe what i mean but it is a slightly better light if it works for you mine was not ideal yeah the arms are great i would recommend <laughs> if you do get a like a light box i would recommend getting a um there is there are things to soften your light mm -hmm. like there are filters that you can put onto it essentially yeah i just don't want to spend money on that, that uh, because the light usually is pretty harsh sometimes and, uh, like after a long stream my eyes will be like tired and i'll yeah. have to like look down because it's bright it's like about if you're looking like this big how big do you think that is how many inches uh it's usually it looks like an eight by six so around eight by six and just a light right above my computer. Yeah. And Looking at um, it pretty bright. <laughs> as far as green screens go, not just this one, but mm -hmm. any green screen, they're really only as good as your light setup is. Yes. Back in the day when I had, I used to have like a little light that was literally just like four inches by three inches off to the side. The green screen was not as smooth back then. Yeah. This light makes a huge difference. Yeah. Lighting. Um, if, you've done, if you've done light any too. photography, you'll, you'll know that lighting makes or breaks mm -hmm. most of what you take exactly it's not necessarily how good your camera is or anything like that but also i don't use a webcam i actually use a very decent camera i use it's a an eos m50 
A Canon EOS M50, you said? I think so. Something like that. I actually got this for Robert's birthday like years ago. It was like $400, but it came with like a travel case and stuff. So it was from Costco. Um, and I have that on an Elgato arm as well. So several hundred dollars if you combine everything together. But yeah, it's about a grand. A grand? Uh, with all the arms and everything? Yeah, surely. I don't know. But I also have that one on an Elgato arm. The Elgato arms work the best because my desk is like weirdly thick. So um, most arms don't fit on it. Like my old microphone, we used to have to like smash it into the desk to make it fit. Yeah. That was really annoying. I forgot about that. That being said, you could definitely get this setup started with probably like like 100 bucks for the green screen, 100 bucks for the light. You and don't then... need a webcam as expensive. Oh, and I mean, do we mention the mic? The mic's a lot too. Okay. And then the camera, you could probably use a webcam for about 100 bucks. And then the my microphone old webcam is was whatever. 60 and it was pretty decent. Yeah, with the video setup, it would take probably like 300 bucks, mm -hmm. and then you'd have a pretty decent setup. Yeah, you don't need to spend as much as we did. And we, if you do spend as much as we do, I would recommend doing the same as us and slowly doing over time. Don't just make a huge purchase on everything all at once because that yeah. will hurt your heart and your wallet. Yeah, I mean, setting up everything, I acquired most of it over, the, over years. Exactly, yeah. Like this light I only had since earlier this year, I think. Yeah. And this, the microphone, this is obviously a really well-known microphone. It's, it's the, sure. the Shure SM7B, and it's about 400 bucks. I can't remember what it was called last night. And then um, someone remembered, and they're like, every streamer has that microphone. And I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> More importantly, um, I really value good arms for things. So, like, the, yeah. the microphone arm um, is actually really expensive. This microphone arm from Frameworks was 200 bucks. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. He's had this for years. Yeah. So this used to be his mic and then he gave it to me whenever I started streaming and he like stopped doing videos. Yeah. I've realized over buying things over the years that things that carry things such as stands arms. and and arms and stuff like that are usually worth their the like price. they really are pay what you get. Hmm. Um as far yeah, as the video. I used to have like actually I still have it. Let me, no, it. Oh, okay. If you're watching the video, you could see. I used to have the camera on a little tripod that was like twenty dollars. This thing was the shakiest thing in the world. Yeah. I accidentally knocked the camera off my desk more than one time and thank God it didn't break. Like it was fine if you're using a webcam, maybe, but it was terrifying to use with the camera. Yeah. The Elgato arm was more expensive, but so much more worth, in my opinion, because I don't live in fear of it just falling and breaking. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, like, if you do end up going with um, a cheaper, like, microphone, like, boom arm or, uh, you know, table arm, then they actually tend to make a lot of noise, which might not be good. They could be very if creaky. You, uh, yeah. It's honestly not that big a deal unless you move it around. So as long as you don't move it while recording, it shouldn't be a problem. Some of them are less flexible as well. The yeah. one that I used to have that didn't fit my desk very well. It wasn't very flexible at all. Yeah. And speaking of arms, like I have a... My your desk. My monitor is a 34-inch ultra-wide. Oh, it's, yeah. And it's on an arm. Yeah. And that arm was, I think, like $300. Oh, my God. Yeah. You because just, I his have, monitor's higher up. I have had not good arms in the past and they are noticeable your monitor will begin sagging if they're not good i don't have an arm for my and monitors a, they're just so much stands not rated for the proper weight so make sure to do your research i forgot they have an arm for that i'm so used to it now yeah yeah but um yeah so i actually really enjoy talking about the setup and stuff <laughs> unfortunately all of this stuff is just generally expensive yes if you're thinking about streaming start with cheaper stuff and then upgrade over time depending if you still like it because yeah. if you don't like it that is a lot of money you just spent yeah like i said you can honestly get away with it for like 300 bucks and then use whatever like hundred dollar microphone you can you can get your hands on yeah there's good stuff robert specifically just likes like good quality things because he's yeah. always been interested in making videos and stuff and also i mean like you don't even have to have like really nice things if you look at like summit 1g for example he's one of the biggest streamers and has been for a really long time and the whole time he has used a audio technica at 2020 or some variant of it for a microphone Isn't that, what we used to have? that is a 120 dollars microphone is that the white one that we used to have yeah oh yeah yeah that one is actually pretty nice i used to do my old podcast on that one yeah. <laughs> that's funny okay i didn't so, use that yeah so you can make anything that one's good. arm sucked though i will get i'll say that <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
But yeah, so I would really just do your research before you buy things. Yes. Is what I would recommend. But yeah, the setup in general was hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Yikes. But I stream a lot, so it feels worth it. Yep. But uh, I think that's going to be about it. We've talked <laughs> about this and rambled on for quite a long time. Whatever. So uh, hopefully you all them so some links. enjoyed it. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure to follow us on all of our socials. Yeah, our Twitter and TikTok are Boonbape OSRS. Our Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram are all Boonbape. I stream five days a week at twitch.tv slash Boonbape. Reminder, I am still sponsored by Factor for the next week or so. If you live in the U.S., if you're league and hard, you don't have time to make food, use Factor. You can get food that's like pre-made, not frozen, and you just have to heat it up and it's delicious. Yep. And uh, yeah, that was the little uh, the little sponsor ad here in the middle. There you go. But yeah, come hang out and stream with me. Twitch.tv slash Boonbait. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> so uh, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you all. Very soon. Bye-bye.